Okay, so this is an ADC, so it's an analog to digital converter. And you might be thinking now, well, why? Why do you need an ADC? The Arduino which you work with has got one built in. And you'd be right, it does. The Arduino Pro Mini has a 10 bit ADC built in, and so do most other microcontrollers. But, um, but this thing is very special, and it's special for two reasons. The first reason is that it's not a 10 bit ADC, it's a 12 bit ADC. And, um, and basically, 2 to the power of 10 is 1024, but 2 to the power of 12 is 4096. And the reason why that's important is because if, say, we had um, 5 volts and we uh, split that into 1024 parts, you'd be able to resolve to, I think it's somewhere about 5 millivolts. So you can resolve to each 5 millivolt um, step, if you like. But with a much greater resolution of 12 bits, it means that basically you can split 5 volts into 4,000 pieces and you'll get four times better resolution. So this thing here uh, allows me to measure uh, or convert analog to digital with extreme precision. And, um, and of course that's extremely useful. So it's, um, yeah, it's a 12-bit ADC. Okay, so, yeah, so you give it an analog input and you get a digital output. And the digital output here is not SPI, it's I2C or I squared C. So that's quite interesting because it's not really a communication technology that I use a lot of. Um, but I will be using it with this. So if we take a closer look at this, you can see there's a little IC, which will be the ADC. There's a resistor, and maybe another two resistors, and a capacitor on the end. Or well, they could be capacitors as well, actually. Capacitor here as well. That's not particularly interesting, but, um, but anyway, let's move on. So you can see the label, GY-ADS1115 slash ADS1015. And you can see that the little white box is marked for the ADS1015. And therefore, this is that model, ADS1015. So let's take a look at the back here. We've got V, which will be the input voltage, uh, also known as VCC. We've got G, which will be ground. We've got SCL, which is usually, usually serial clock. We've got SDA, which is serial data. We've got ADDR, which is uh, address. Because we're using the I squared C uh, communication technology, these things can be given addresses. Alert, I'm not going to talk about alert. And then you've got A0, A1, A2, and A3, which are the analog inputs. OK, so there we have it. So there's the ADC. and. Um, I'm going to show you how to use this thing and why it's so cool. So I said earlier that, that there were two uh, special things about this ADC. So the first one is the resolution, which I've already told you about. What's the second? The second is that it's got a programmable gain amplifier built into the chip. So um, that's really useful. Basically, if you want to read an analog in and you want to amplify it or make it a lot bigger, you can do within the chip itself. So within this little module, you can actually specify that. So for example, if I was to measure the analog uh, or the analog output, if you like, from a shunt resistor into here, I could do that. And Shunt resistors usually give a very small voltage drop, and the reason for that is because you don't want to waste too much energy. So anyway, there'll be a small voltage drop. So usually they're tiny, so it could be that the maximum or full-scale uh, deflection, if you like, could be 150 millivolts. And um, 
for a microcontroller to read in, that's kind of pathetic. It's it's far too small for the Arduino Pro Mini. Um, but with being able to resolve better to 12 bits, that's one good thing. But the second thing is we can actually amplify it at the same time. And um, you can amplify up to 16 times. So this really is a good device. Anyway, enough talking. I think it's probably time to look at the documentation and uh, let's see if we can pick out anything interesting about this. Right, so it says over here ADS1015 just here and uh, that's the one I have so that's good. What does it say? Ultra small, low power, 12 bit ADC with internal reference. And uh, let's pick out some interesting points here. So wide supply range, 2 to 5.5. That's good because uh, microcontrollers are usually 3.3 volts or 5 volts. So that's good. It will work with either. Um, what else does it say here? I squared C interface. That's good. Four single-ended or two differential inputs. That's also good. What it means is that you could um, you could read in four single um, ADC uh, points if you like four different voltages, or you could read in two different differential inputs. So, for example, if you've got uh, one pin which is one volt and another pin which is say three volts, you could actually get this little device, this ADC, to work out the difference between the two. And um, that can be useful. So, for example, if you had a current shunt, um, that would be useful because you'd want to measure the difference between um, the, well, one point to the other point. So, uh, one side of the shunt to the other side of the shunt. You wouldn't necessarily want it to be referenced to ground. So, um, it would be very useful in a situation like that. Programmable comparator. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Let's have a look down here. Pinout. We don't. I'm not too worried about the pinout because it's the uh, little device has already been put together for me. Gain error. Ah, oh, that might be interesting. So gain error. Uh, let's say 80C is high. Ah. 0.04% gain error. That's pretty impressive. Full scale input. Yeah, this is quite interesting here. Full scale input. A programmable sorry, programmable gain amplifier is implemented. Blah 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 blah. Right. So the default is two thirds. Um, so I'm not sure why why they've done it that way. But the default gate is uh, sorry. Default gain. It's two thirds, um, and you can use a gain of one, a gain of two, a gain of four, a gain of eight, and a gain of sixteen. So if you use it, these gains, you've got to be careful that you don't input uh, above that value or below the minus side of that value. So if I was to use a gain of sixteen, I'd have to make sure the input value is between minus 0 0.25 volts and lower than plus 0 0.256 volts. Um, okay. Um, a lot of this stuff would be important if I was not um, going to use a pre-written library, but I will be using a pre-written library, so somebody else has already done this work for us. Don't need to worry about that either. Okay, so um, that's that done. We've had a quick look at the data sheet and I think now it will be time to get started. So let's wire this up. 